So as we think about this backdrop and being late stages in the economic cycle, you know, we talked about the need for diversification. So if you look at this chart, uh, just to frame kind of the historical relationship, we maybe can unpack where are interest rates really going from here. The blue line shows you the U.S. 10-year interest rates over time. The gray line shows you nominal GDP. And what we've seen historically, going back to the 50s, is that the 10-year tends to be just under nominal growth, other than the period of high inflation in the 80s, which was kind of a different regime. So when you think about this relationship, does this framework still hold today? And if so, where do you think 10-year rates are going from here? Well, we, th we think it does. And of course, it makes sense, because when you're talking about high-quality uh, fixed income bonds, uh, you, you know, if, if it were the case that yields were higher than, uh, than levels of growth, you know, why would you take risk to do any sort of economic activity and take on that volatility if you could, in a, in a simple way, uh, earn returns that uh, were higher by, by investing in, in, in basically risk-free assets? So that's why the relationship exists, and over a, a secular time period, it's one of the, the, uh, you know, the guidelines or general rules that investors should look at. So in the case of the U.S., um, we still think it's, it's the case that potential levels of growth are below 2%, and that's because of the changing demographics and low productivity, and there are reasons why that's not going to change quickly. U.S. growth, call it potential growth, could be as low as 1.5%, but let's say 1.5%, 1.75%, one and, and then you add back to that uh, the Fed's inflation target of 2%, uh, you get a number somewhere you know, in the mid threes. And that's the level on average that you would expect uh, you know, the 10-year yield to be. Now, the reasons why currently uh, it's lower, of course, it's a starting place. We're not that far away. If you look at the market's pricing, much of that movement up into the low threes is already in the price in the next uh, couple of years. Um, but it's also the global level of yields that's probably suppressing um, U.S. yield uh, increases at this point in time, and, and that's going to be with us for some period of, t of time as well. So, you know, basically a, a way to, to say that we don't expect that 10-year uh, yields are going to rise, uh, you know, rapidly from here. Uh, we're towards the upper end of the range of, of what we think is likely to persist for some time here. So a lot of the move is probably behind us Definitely. at this stage. And Scott, as we talk about the baseline view of where the 10-year goes from here, Worth also noting, noting that there are quite a few risks where the tenure actually moves lower, right? So how do you think about that as well? Well, sure. I mean, certainly any sort of growth surprise to the downside, which could come about from a geopolitical event or a, a growth scare coming out of some part of the world uh, in, infecting uh, the U.S. on a global scale, could bring down yield substantially. I mean, we've seen that several times over the past several years when interest rates started to go up. Um, and, you know, I, I think more recently one of the reasons for the a more sudden move to this higher level of rates in the U.S. has been um, a focus on the inflation dynamic, and people have been very concerned about maybe uh, wages moving rapidly. You know, we would say p probably that got the market moving maybe you know, too fast uh, on just a couple of data points. When you look at it more holistically, as we do, and when you model out inflation developments, you know, we expect inflation to be slowly trend moving back to trend and moving back to the Fed's target over the course of the year. So some of the Recent data that's sort of been the catalyst for higher yields, you know, when people take another look and look at some more data, uh, we think will cause them to, uh, to reappraise the situation and realize that uh, yields could easily fall back down uh, in this sort of environment.